Welcome to ConcordiaTheology.org. My name is David Schmidt. I hold the Greg H. Bennett Chair in Homiletics and Literature. And with me is Dr. Dale Meyer, President of Concordia Seminary. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Schmidt. Glad to be with you. Yeah. Appreciate it. We're here today to talk about your new book, Word Alive. Mm. This is a collection of sermons, is that correct? It's a collection of sermons from, uh, well, I've been preaching 49 years. So there are some early ones, some late ones. There are some in there that I would write differently if I were doing it again today, and, and I make notes about that. So yeah, 52 sermons spread out through the church here. How did you decide which sermons to take? I mean that... We almost threw the sermons up in the air and see which ones landed at the bottom of the steps. I mean, it was eclectic. Right. I mean, in all those years of preaching, there are a ton of sermons, as, as you know very well. It's not just Sundays when we preach, a lot of other times. So I just arbitrarily went through, through sermons from my parish ministry, a couple from my student days, my time at the Lutheran Hour, and just pulled some out. And I thought, yeah, yeah, this is okay. I did pull some out. I said, no, this, this isn't going to work. Why but did it was you eclectic. Why did, you, why did you put some that, I mean, why would you put some sermons in there that you might want to change now? What would be the reasoning for that? A, a, a big reason is to make the point that, as, as Paul says, we have this treasure in jars of, of clay. I mean, no one preaches perfect sermons. Right. And I think, I think at least in, in our context, maybe in all churches, there's a lot of pressure put on for each sermon to, just to be the greatest articulation of doctrine and, and, and practical application for life. And you can't do that. You can't do that. I think we sometimes put our students under too much pressure for them to come up with this Come down from Mount Sinai, wonderful sermon. So, so I, I, I put the weaker ones in there just to say, yeah, it's okay. I mean, Cicero said that you don't judge a, an order on the basis of one sermon, but the whole body of his work. So, yeah, that's well, the I, reason. I kind of like that uh, from the standpoint that it would be easy when somebody's the uh, president of a seminary and the Lutheran Hour speaker to have this huge aura about you. You do quite have, some, have somewhat of that, but to have this huge aura about you, and yet you're kind, of, you're kind of sharing who you are and how you've grown over the years by offering us a variety of sermons from a variety of contexts where you were in ministry. And, and hopefully the growth is evident as, as you go through this. They, they don't start chronologically with the youngest ones so that, okay. so that the weaker sisters are scattered throughout, <laughs> throughout the book. Well, how are, how are they arranged? What's the uh, roughly according to the church here? Okay. You know, you start with Epiphany, move into Lent. So I could kind of use it as a devotional resource, read it, reflect on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, one yeah. of the things I really liked about the sermons in there is that it isn't just the sermon; that you also have, um, I don't know, you you have comments about what's going on in the sermon, but then you have extra material that I could use if I wanted to meditate on certain thoughts or that you felt you would have included now. And I think that really mm. kind of opens it up for more than just reading sermons. You could actually use it as part of your devotional life and that type of a thing. Yeah, thanks. I, I, and you could also use it for a small group discussion, Bible class, and so on. The intent there was to take the sermon and the sermon will generally, if not always, be about some point of doctrine, one of the six chief parts, okay? So like in Lent, it's Jesus suffering for us, which is especially the second article. And out of that then, I would come up with some, some Bible passage, some quotations from the small catechism for, for further reflection. That was the intent, so that you, don't, you, you are able, if, if, if a person would choose, to work through this slowly and at their own pace, individually or, or in a group setting. Now, I, my mother has actually been reading really? this. Really? Yes. Really? She has. I gave her one of these uh, for Easter, and right. she's been reading them and enjoying them. So she compares them to your and sermons. She said, my son would have done this. Them. No, <laughs> telling me what I should do. But uh, So she's enjoyed it, and uh, I, she finds them uh, inspirational, and she likes the commentary that you have afterwards. Have you heard any responses from other people who have read this? Uh, yeah, I got an email two days ago from a man in the northwest area of the United States who, who reads 
uh, either these sermons now or sermons by Bonhoeffer. Mm -hmm. I certainly hope that we don't meet the same end, but <laughs> uh, your mother must be a wonderful person, I tell you. <laughs> she is. I love my mother very much, yeah. which is why I gave her this book of sermons. <laughs> so, Does she report to you yes, what you, she she's reading? Yes, she reports to me when she's reading them. But it's, I think, I think unfortunately, we have fallen out of the devotional practice of reading sermons. Mm -hmm. I, I, really, I mean, that was reading Luther's sermons, that was a, an important part of the devotional life. And I'm glad to see that we have some resources that can be used that way. Each sermon has a retrospective, I think we called it, retrospective, where I look back now at age 71 and reflect on either how I would write that sermon differently or how times have changed or techniques of writing the sermon or, you know, hopefully more maturation theologically. And that was enjoyable to look back and say, yeah, here's how I see it 10, 20, 40 years later. So I, I like that. Uh, it, and it, it also just kind of helps me tie up some ends in my life? Well, in a, I mean, I think on the back of the book, I think there's a picture of you, and is it a grandson of yours, or is it, no, I guess it's in the front. We have a, I saw a picture well, of, your, of you and your grandson. There, there's, I, I did a book of, yeah, here are the grandsons. Yeah, there okay, are the grandsons. Yeah, there and it's in a sense, I think that the reflecting on your entire ministry of preaching the Word of God is kind of like offering a gift to the next generation to carry that on. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. in, in the introduction, um, I made a couple of points. One is that this book is intended just to say, hey, you know, we all put our pants on the same. You know, let, let's not sit judgmentally about other brothers' sermons. I mean, we can talk and, cre and, 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 and be creative in our discussion, helpful in our discussion. I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't Say, you know, you could have done this better, Dale, but, but, but let's be human. No, we put our, on our, our pants the same way. I found it was a lot easier if you do one leg at a time. Uh, I'll try that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but the other thing was, and I said this at, near the end of the introduction, I wrote this so that our, our grandkids, we have five grandkids, they are all boys, will know years from now what Opa believed. Yeah. So, th so that's a big thing. I mean, let, let's face it. This book is not going to be popular reading 500 years from now. Maybe next week, you know. <laughs> so, so why do it? Well, a number of reasons. One was because the publishers, Tri-Pillar, asked if I would do it. Then the second reason is, you know, so my grandkids have something to read. Not just your grandkids. Well, hopefully your mother my and mother, hopefully a few others. Myself, <laughs> others who read the sermons. By the way, I, I would mention the courtesy of Tri-Pillar Publishing, who they are wonderful to work with. Every one of our uh, candidates this year who received calls on call day got a free copy of the book. That's great. And I inscribed it. You know, Mrs. Schmidt reads this, so should you. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you, Dale, for, for this and for your ministry uh, for all of us. I appreciate it. It's, it's a blessing. And I want to say it is, it is an indescribable blessing to work at Concordia Seminary with all of you. Good. Well, thank you for being with us at concordiatheology.org.